Hey everybody, it's Scott Detweiler here. During this explosion of AI art, are you noticing that you're discovering artists that you didn't know existed or finding great styles that really speak to you? Or are you just copying and pasting a prompt and going, hmm, when I type this in, I get this kind of cool answer, so I'm just going to keep doing that. This is a really great opportunity for us to discover artists and styles that maybe we didn't know existed. And I have a few resources I want to share with you. And these are things that I use whenever I'm working in Midjourney or Stable Diffusion, trying to create something that speaks to me. So the goal of this video is by the time we're done, I want you to understand, really understand, how you can manipulate the prompts to get the type of art you're looking for instead of just hoping to roll something that's gonna be really good. So I wanna give you some resources that I use all the time. I wanna to talk to you about why I like them and how to use them. So start out, let's just take a look at some flowers. So again, it's just a vase of flowers. So we'll start with Peter Moorbacher, again, a fantastic portrait artist. Again, I'm a person who puts money into the artists that I enjoy. I was a patron for Peter Moorbacher. I've got decks of cards by him, enamel pins and so on. Fantastic artist. Now this face of flowers is not very good representation of what he does, uh, but it is a place to start. Another good one would be Tom Bagshaw. So another fantastic artist who really speaks to me. I like the style. Uh, Sid Mead, again, something different. All these are very varied and each one has a completely different look and feel. Um, Russ Mills or Raymond Swanland. Tim Doyle, and an artist I'm sure you're all familiar with, Octane Render. So you see people using Octane Render, and that's really kind of how it's being used. And of course, you can mix and match these together to create your own Frankenstein artist as well. But what I want to impress upon you is that when you go into this with your prompts in mind, have a look so that when these images come out of there, you have an idea of what you're going to get handed from a stylistic standpoint. Now, Midjourney is well aware of the fact that they are not represented very well worldwide. For example, a Chinese artist, for example, or the Pacific Rim there. Again, another person I supported on Patreon, WLOP, is not really represented stylistically inside of Midjourney at this point. So if you followed me at all, one of the first resources you've seen me use before is this teapot. And this may seem like somewhat of a weird site, but this gives you a fantastic idea of how Midjourney may react to different keyword combinations. It's also very good for a place for inspiration. So if you're wondering how Midjourney might deal with different lighting prompts, for example, if you're looking for side lighting or a Rembrandt lighting, uh, this is a really great reference. Now it's not all inclusive. Uh, Bob, who hangs out on Discord for Midjourney, uh, is the one who put this together. And it's a one person job, as far as I know, and he's put a lot of effort into it. But you can go in here and you can ask for different things like ideas for lighting and dimensionality, for example, or different materials. Uh, so it's a really great reference. And again, a place to start because very few variables have moved. It's the Utah teapot and it's the same every time. It's just different ways of looking at it. I pretty much since I first got into AI art, this has become kind of the gold standard for me to look for artists. Uh, so this Visual Style Encyclopedia by Syncarnate. Syncarnate, thank you so much for assembling this. I, I wish I had a, um, a donation link for you because this is a, a tool I use all the time. And I really appreciate your time and effort in taking care of putting this together for all of us. Uh, but you can see also that whether or not uh, Midjourney is currently trained in that artist. Now, again, I think this is a one person job, so it may or may not be up to date. It depends on you know how much time and effort that person puts into this. But it is a great resource for a quick guide to references. If you're looking for a specific artist, uh, this is where you can go. Now, last and certainly not least is the artist reference. So this spreadsheet as well is fantastic because it shows not only environmental, portrait, but also the Utah teapot if it were represented by this artist. Now this person has actually also put in here whether the character has been updated to version three. And because version three just went to beta and then came back out of beta, I'm sure that a version four is probably coming sooner than later, uh, then this will need to be roughed up again. Uh, but you can see a fantastic reference with all these great thumbnails for you to quickly decide what artist you would like to go and uh, reference for your work. So what I've done to keep track of all this stuff is I put it all together on my old photography blog website. So I've ripped down all, almost all the old articles and I made one article at the top that contains these three or four links. Again, not 800 links. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I've seen so many websites that have all these links. I just want the couple that are useful. And that's what this is. I'm going to keep it up to date because I'm also using it. So when I'm trying to keep track of what artists or other quick reference guides to a different look and feel or style uh, that I want to use all those bookmarks in one place. And again, I have so many AI art bookmarks that I'm never going to find what I'm looking for. 
and I'll probably create separate ones for stable diffusion uh, since that tends to have a little bit different flavor uh, and it may not represent these artists the same way. Same with Dali or as we get into Im uh, imaging or we get into party and other new AI systems that are coming around the block. I'm sure that there will be future blog posts that contain links to other artists that I'm trying to keep track of. Uh, but I want to give you a resource that you can go to uh, to make it easy for you. Uh, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible because instead of just copying and pasting blindly to find a prompt that we might like, let's take time to craft a prompt that's meaningful to us and then we can get to the end result much faster. Again, I'm not going to stop at the prompt. I should get a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> I should make that. Uh, I'm taking these into Photoshop and trying to make my own art based on these using my photography, using my own artwork as well. Uh, but I really love having a good quick style reference. And that's what I wanted to pass on to you today. So everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.